Hello, welcome back to the Notcast. This is an unusual episode. We are on location in that there Cockney land surrounded by Londoners and not Londoners. We are in a pub called the Doric Arch, which is near Camden. No, it isn't near Camden, it's right outside Euston Station. And um, we haven't asked permission, don't tell anyone we're doing this. And so um, it's the 2nd of July, 2023, and uh, it's number 300, big number. So if you've already noticed, I do have somebody sat next to me. That's my evil twin. Actually, You've got the beard. I've You're in the mirror yeah. universe. You're the I, evil one. Spot. Yes, that's right. I've got the beard, so I'm the evil one. And today we're doing a what's in my bag. Um, so we've been on an adventure today. We went to a record fair in Alexandra Palace. And we then went to the RAF Museum in Hendon, because that's what blokes of a certain age do. We are of that certain age, but not yet. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go look at what's in the respective bags. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit surprising, because my brother, Graham, has brought me a bag of crap that he has bought from various cheap places over the past few months. I, I have forgotten completely what's in here. Not all of it is crap. I mean, just most of it. All right. This is the bag. Oh, aren't you excited? I can tell. On, on tender hooks. Not tender hooks. Tender hooks, by the way. Tender hooks are different from tender hooks. Okay. And uh, well, I'm just going to go in here, pull something out, and then I'll try and find out why on earth he bought it for me. This is the first thing. Tell me about it, Graham. This Why is the James Bond Encyclopedia 2008 edition uh, in hardback. I bought a copy two weeks ago when, we, when me and Mark were last in London. And um, I think it was in the Notting Hill Comic Book Exchange and it was 50p. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, I didn't realise at the time, but the version that I bought is the 2012 upgrade, which includes Skyfall, which meant my existing copy was redundant. So, it is now for Mr. Marcus Rudis. Basically, you just give me a cast off ship, right? Story of my life. I have no idea where I'm going to put this. I have no idea if I'm even interested in it. I guess it's mine now, so uh, I like you, you stole it, right? Are you going to put it on the shelf, then you're going to read it, and then you're going to donate it back to a charity shop? Very probably, actually. That's what I do. It's all part of the eternal cycle of life. Like or upcycling. 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 So eternal cycle of upcycling. This is the second thing. Tell me about this. Why this got this is the Pink Floyd 2023 calendar reduced to £3.50. It is 12 inches by 12 inches with a large collection of various Pink Floyd artworks on the other side. For example, the covers of the Division Bell, the covers of Pulse, um, the covers of Delicate Sound of Thunder, some live shots. The I think that one is the cover of the Wish We're Here promo CD. It is. That's the cover of the later years compilation, Yeah, I think. Obviously, momentary lapse of reason. A 1994 tour promoter shirt. Uh, well, so promoter there's a poster. significant absence of anything related to <coughs> Sir Walter Rogers on here. Um, that was three pound fifty in the oh, yeah. in shop. I, whose name I've forgotten. Sorry. What's this? Oh, it's brown paper bag. It's a bit dodgy, but uh, we'll find out. <gasps> I think I know what this is. <gasps> oh uh, yeah. I think you know what that is. I bought that at the RF Museum for a present for an important human in my life. So, what's this crap, Graham? This is Thunderbolt and Lightfoot from Jeff Bridges and Cliff Clint Eastwood. Moody. Cliff, Cliff Eastwood. Cliff Eastwood is his lesser known uh, West Glidwood reggae companion. Um, I asked Mark, I said, do you want this? And he says, I haven't seen it. And he said, I'll pay a good for it. And I said, it's good, because I paid a good for it too. And there you are. So, he's got a now 70s conference watch. Bob Dylan? Uh, uh, Bob Dylan the Folk Years DVD. Oh, I, can get, I can get one pence in trade on that and see yes, or I can uh, give it to Mark for nothing. This? The Last Jewel, oh, the Ridley Scott film with... Um, Sir Scott, Lu Scott Ridley. Sir Scott Ridley with Ben Affleck and Mad Damon. And uh, Adam Driver. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it but is, isn't Mostly it? Matt Damon. Okay. And I think that was a quid. Directed by Ridley Scout. You haven't seen it? So no, no, uh, I, I made you, uh, I said, do you want it? And you said yes. And let's not forget, Ridley Scout, when he was filming Robin Hood in 2010, the question he was overheard asking is, why am I making this shit? Which is what I thought when I saw it. Also, the least accurate cinematic depiction of Dungeness in history. This, Frank Black, 1993 solo album. Is that the one that includes Hang On To Your Ego? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's on 4AD. 
it's his first solo album. You don't have it on CD? No, you do. I yeah. think I paid a, a, a quid for it in a, uh, last time I was down in London without remembering I already had it. Also, by the way, this is some this includes some songs that Frank Black wrote for the Pixies before the Pixies split, but after they made their last album. I think those songs are Fu Manchu and oh, I think there's another one. Los Angeles, maybe. Los okay. Angeles sounds like a very Pixies title. Okay, I mean, we're going to look in. it up on the internet if you don't know already know. Oh. Shall I tell you more? Tell you more, tell you more, so I get very far. Uh huh. Okay, this is the Beloved's Time After Time six track US CD single, which I bought from Mark. Yeah, Charity Shop for £1.25 of your Earth money. It's got an unreleased studio track called Pablo and a bunch of other remixes. Um, mm. It's got the Chillum Willem mix, it's which is very, way. very good indeed. Yes. I really love the Beloved. It, 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 um, they're kind of a band that most people have forgotten about because they did Sweet Harmony. And everyone thinks that's the only fucking song they've ever got. Which is not the case. They were a fantastic pop synth duo in the late 80s, early 90s that never got the respect that they deserved. Better than Erasure. Better than Erasure? Hang on, hang on. Are, you, are we having a bell? Slash Clark or Tony and Slash Low moment here in terms of you no, know Tony Low the best songwriting duo of all time. Shh. Everyone knows it's Almond and Ball. This get out tra la la is That's a load of crap. Is a very unusual choice. It is the Pink Floyd Best Ballads Pink Factory Pink Press Asian. Silver CD. Um, it purports to be on the Harvest label. It purports to come from Australia, but is in fact a factory press sort of semi bootleg unofficial compilation from some disgraced past of former communist bureau. Um, three pounds in a record fair. Don't look for it on Discogs. It's blocked. This is the Hands of Love by Kate Bush. This Fugazi? is this is thirteen songs by Fugazi. Oh, I don't it. have thirteen songs. I well, have... that's because you're a patient boy. You wait, you wait, you wait. Quote the opening chorus to yeah, uh, Waiting Room. Um, I had a copy without a sleeve. I bought a copy with a sleeve. That was that was extra, so that's now yours. Um, <gasps> Queen Lies of the Rainbow. Is it the Rainbow? Is it, is it Rainbow? Yeah, yes, yeah, Rainbow. Because right, there's also there's also a Night of the Odeon, which is Hans from Phobia, 25th yeah. of yeah. December 1974. Uh, Live at the Rainbow is Live at the Rainbow 1970. Actually, 1974. 1974. Yeah. I got the date wrong on Hans from Phobia. was This was originally a was it a TV broadcast that was later used as a supporting feature to some other films on these little double bills in the UK? Mm -hmm. This is the this is the Blu-ray. Dude, dude, I was like one and a half when this happened. I had no idea. Uh, speak for yourself. I was only the same. Um, so that is a sixty odd minute concert from the Rainbow on uh, I think it's the Queen Two tour, and then three bonus tracks from Japan, and that's the standard definition Blu-ray. But if you look for it on DVD secondhand, it's a lot more expensive than the Blu-ray. It was, so it makes no difference which one you buy. Yeah, and it was made when. And this is an important thing to know. The hair was on the top of Freddie's head and not the top of his lip, which means obviously not peak Freddie. Because everybody knows once Freddie got the moustache, it gave him superpowers, much like uh, Zebedee in the Magic Round. Like Zebedee? Yeah, because in Dougal and the Blue Cat, when Zebedee loses his moustache and it's stolen, he loses his magic powers. So there you are. It's the same thing. Zebedee and Freddie Mercury very closely related. Are you saying people with moustaches have superpowers? Because this might explain a lot about. Is he Scorpions in yeah. the 70s and Michael Mike okay. Michael Slash from the so Centre? There's three Planet of the Apes films here on, on Blu-ray. There is. Presumably from the Planet of the Apes. Uh, beneath the Planet of the Apes, which is the second one. Uh, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, which is the fourth one, I think. That's the fourth one. And Escape from the Planet of the Apes, which is the third one, all on Blu-ray, all from the separate box set. Um, I found them in a photo shop for like 50 p. Okay. Uh, it does have the extended version of Conquest. Sorry. What's this? That is a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise. And it's related to something you bought me earlier today. Okay, so this is uh, the junior novelization of Superman <laughs> 4, 2050 Superman in Cardiff Market. Yeah, so Superman 4, uh, of course, is the film Superman vs. the Nukes. Superman vs. the Nukes. Uh, and also in film which uh, means every time we go to Milton Keynes I now think about Superman. Oh, Superman. Superman. Superman! It's a junior novel version, isn't it? It's the junior novel version, which I didn't realise at the time. And it starts with the phrase, It's alive! That's, that's just the advert on the inside. Oh, right. okay. I mean, the first thing, the first in the prologue, tells you that thousands of miles below Earth dangled invitingly as if suspended against the velvet black of the void. That is, frankly, pretty heavy. Also, by the way, this is the first printing, uh, as you can tell, because it, it goes down from 12 down to 1 
on there. Mm. If you want to tell how a first edition is, if it's got the one on the far left, that's generally the first edition. Now, they used to do junior novelizations of films because um, adult novelizations were sometimes a bit chunky. So the junior version of June would probably be about 48 pages, and the adult version of June would be something like 4,000 pages. I think it's at least 648, but I could be wrong. I guess this is for my birthday and I don't know about it. Well, you won't have to pay me. That, my friends, is the soundtrack to John Carpenter's 1978 film, Elvis. <laughs> because you're a John Carpenter fan. Unfortunately, that's why it only cost me three pounds. I'd like to thank the gods of Bridgestick, they'll help me sell I'd like to thank the gods of a record shop somewhere in Scarborough for that. The original soundtrack from the new motion picture, Elvis, starring Kurt Russell. You had it in the Elvis section? Yeah. And the soundtracks. <laughs> so I oh, purchased well. it. Um, what a curious. Part of McCartney and that will be swapping. Uh, yeah, okay. Does that makes sense. So, is there anything else in there for you? No, I don't think so. No, okay. no. All right, so, Graham's going to talk us through what he bought from the record shop today. And I'm going to take the piss out of the bad choices. Because we will be taking the piss on terrible, terrible taste in some terrible, terrible bands. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, you have bought some Dev Leppard, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot to screen this out before we got that far. Too late. And then I'll, I'll be talking about uh, the things I bought and why I bought them. Okay. Okay, Graham sorted out his big boxes of crap. There are three, three boxes. First up, the Fearless Flaming, sorry, the Fearless Freaks, the documentary of the Flaming Lips. Oh, I should, I, by the way, I should tell you when, you, when you look at it, just have a look at it in the screen, and if you see the reflection screen, just move it a little bit to try and reduce it so it looks better. Are you telling me to turn my glasses off? No, 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 no not at all. Like I can see, when you, when you hold something in front of the camera, just be careful about the light reflections on okay. the things. Yeah, yeah I know what it looks. Um, Give you a quick peek peek behind the curtain there, some behind the scenes stuff. In this, the days of Blu-rays and DVDs, there would be an hour-long discussion about blocking, but this is not the case. No. Block frequently enough, no. This is not a Patrick Williams video. Um, so, uh, I have this at home, mm -hmm. but uh, the version I have, has a crack on the playing surface of the disc so it doesn't play properly, so this is a replacement. Uh, okay. Next up okay. is Quick Feeder, and this is the Toluna album from 2019. I like a Feeder. couple of, I like a couple of Feeder songs. Get in there. And that's a Quick. I bought a book. I bought a book. Pera Ubu and. Uh, Ooh, Modern Dance. I haven't got this Pera Ubu album. I think Pera Ubu are a bit of a blind spot for me, and I should know more about it. So more about them as a band and mm. investigate them. So for a pound, I thought that was worth buying. Okay. Which means I have to now yeah, just, just pick out stuff at random. Uh, too. There's no um, Eric Clapton's EC was here, a terribly, terribly sexist album cover. Uh, but I have a couple of Eric Clapton albums. Can I, can I just point out very quickly that there is no justifiable reason to have an album cover like that. That is almost as bad as Scorpions Love at First Stink. Even when I was 14, and like I, just, I hadn't spoken to um, a human female that, that wasn't either like my mum or my friends' mums or their sisters. I knew that album covers like this were juvenile shit. And this album cover is disgusting. So well, I'm, I'm, it's really pointless and gratuitous, and I really hate covers like that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, because 1974 was a very different time. Oh my God. It gets sweet. even worse and worse. That's disgraceful. What were they thinking? They were thinking in 1974 it was acceptable to be disgraceful about women. Thinking and I cannot head, not the big head. Uh, the definitive Kirsty McCall, sorry, the definitive Ewan McCall collection, because Ewan McCall is a folk singer, but he's also Kirsty's dad. And uh, again, a bit of a black spot. I think I should know more about Ewan, so it's a point where I buy something to investigate the music and see what it's like and see whether I like it. How many records have you bought? Ah, uh, we'll count my batteries. A lot. REM, Shiny Happy People, uh, Limited CD UK with the free live tracks. I remember California, Get Off and Pop Song 89 from the Green World album tour. I think these are mostly from tour film, didn't get, but could be wrong. Um, another album I bought just to listen to it and see what it's like The Stray Cats. Uh, best of the Stray Cats, Back of the Alley. I know it's like 50s rockabilly. But best of the Beatles. Uh, they're a band that I again I feel like a bit of a blank spot and I should be investigating. Okay, next. Okay, next up is Porno for Pyros. Uh, Pets, the UK four track CD single featuring an exclusive radio edit, an otherwise unavailable track called Tonight, and the Cursed Female slash Cursed Male medley. Again, that's. Yes. I like Jane's Addiction, I like Porno for Pyros, I don't have this. There you are. 
Psycho can be. Just, just do some mirror change. Can't remember, but it, 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 I paid exactly what it said for on the sticker, which was free and um, well, enough said. Pay for it. It's Psycho Candy. Uh, Bob Marley, Rasta Man, Vibration. I think this is the 1976 release. I, it's a compilation of otherwise unavailable B-sides, etc. I don't think I've got it. Okay. Just imagine on the human gear for home with it disappearing into the... Uh, it's yeah. a fence. Pera Ubu, good yeah. housing. Yeah. Okay. The first classic album. Again, Pera Ubu, bit of a bit of a blank spot for me. I think that was all those were like a quid or so or something like that. Is the word blank or blind? I thought it was blind spot. It indicates like a thing on your blind. Your... Blind. Yes, it could do the same. Uh, this is another one of my pictures. It's Jacob Pistorius in New York. Now Jacob Pistorius is one of the most incredible bass players of all time. Is he better than Peter? <laughs> Different. Diplomatic answer. Uh, he uh, he and Peter have very different bass styles. Is he better than Guy Pratt? Different. You see, what Jacob Pistorius... Is he better uh, than any other bass player in the world? Rob Trujillo, without doubt. Okay. Ouch. Rob Trujillo... Sort of milk table grass. Rob Trujillo is not fit to lick the boots of Jacob Pistorius. Oh, like uh, though uh, Rob Trujillo is a massive fan of Jacob Pistorius. The difference is that uh, Jacob is an innovator and Rob is an imitator. <gasps> Now, this is... Call 999, there's been a murder. Oh, no, okay, no, no, no. carry on. Okay. Um, first person to really properly use bass harmonics on tracks like Sarah, especially on his debut album. So this is a live recording from New York. This is uh, Joan Baez, the uh, best of the early Vanguard years. Does that have the song from Silent Running on? I don't know, actually. Uh, okay. I don't think it does. Song, uh, the, uh, Jane, most people would know Joan Baez from songs like Diamonds and Russ. Mainly from being covered by Judas Priest, which sounds nothing like it. Uh, Diamonds and Lust is a fantastic track, so again, it's a something where I just like, I feel like I should learn more about it. Now, I am going to unapologetically say I'm a teenage metalhead, and I still am, so I have uh, indulged myself on my teenage metalhead ways with a Def Leppard CD single now, which features the live which tracks. Is this from? Now, this track comes from 2002, but the B sides are Pour Some Sugar Live in Bond and Let's Get Rocked Live in Bond. Neither of which I'm sure I have elsewhere. I think they're 1992, but it doesn't actually state, so there might be different recordings. I bought it for completism's sake just in case. This is another Def Leppard single. This is Two Steps Behind, backed with a, an acoustic, acoustic version of Tonight and a track called SMC. Um, a lot of the era, a lot of these tracks from Def Leppard in this era were manufactured by Philip Dupont Optical, uh, which means that they very often have uh, faulty discs, the CD rot. Uh, there was another copy of this disc in the same place for the same cost, which was riddled with CD rot. Uh, this one isn't. So this is like a backup copy in case mine does develop CD rot. rot. This is uh, Def Leppard's Tonight, Tonight CD single. Sorry, Tonight CD single in the uh, fallout set. So again, it's PDO. Um, it has the demo tonight and Pour Some Sugar On Me Live in Bonds, so it might be the same track. Again, it's a backup copy because of PDO disc rock. Um, this is Skid Row's 18 and Life CD single, featuring Here I Am, Live in the Marquee, as an exclusive track. I paid a quid for it. And Where I like that coming in 1989. Sarah, I'm, I'm fully apologetic. Whatever say, it says on there. In, in 1989, I was a virgin, and I knew Skid Row were awful. I was a teenage well head. I liked them then. I liked the first album still. It's fun to watch you desperately try and claw some excuse as to why you like hair metal. There's definitely a whole lot of love. The first uh, and only UK CD single they ever did. In fact, I think it's the first CD, first UK single they ever did. The B-sides are Baby, the B -sides are Baby Come On Home, Travelling the Side Blues, and I think which has been on an album. And there's a whole lot of love. Radio edit. So for a quid, this is pretty much like you know. How much more of this will be gone? Not much. Okay, good. I'll come back to that. No, you won't. Tony Hancock. This is Hancock. This is a gift of someone who loves fifties comedy. Um, Genesis three by three EP. I think I paid a quid for this on seven inch. The CD reissues have completely different mixes because they lost some of the massive master tapes. Genesis are awful. The Shaman, intact. This Not is awful. This is the original 19, 
1990 LP. 1990 LP with the merchandise thing. Merchandise insert that you can't see. I love the Shaman. I don't care who knows that. I think they're an incredible band. Like a number of other bands from the same period of time, the Wonder Stuff, Dustin, Popley itself, for example. They've been written out in history as uncool and forgotten, um, as if there was embarrassing Billy fucking Fury. The Shaman are a wonderful band, and I love them. And this uh, is I will fight like anybody that disagrees with me. Well, I won't. I'll probably, I'll I'll just, probably just find me on the internet and block you, actually. That's what Brown okay. does. This is the original UK release with the original UK mixes, which is far superior to the US LP, which is essentially the remixes, which is never standardly available. But I mean, <laughs> I, actually, I think all the Shiny stuff's deleted, isn't it? Probably, because it's on uh, one little independent. It's one little Indian. Yeah. The Art of McCartney. This is a double vinyl. No, triple actually triple vinyl um, of approximately 34 songs of covers of Paul McCartney songs by bands such as Billy Joel, Bob Dylan, Kiss, Def Leppard, uh, Cure, skip over the uh, the heart bits. A couple maybe. of people out of Chip Trick, Jeff Lynne, VLO, Willie Nelson etc. Alan City, whoever they are, sorry guys, uh, never heard of them. Larry Gibb of the Bee Gees, Steve Miller, Perry Farrell. Um, this was a complete bargain um, because Three pounds? Three pounds on vinyl, which means I, I do believe I've just swapped it you for the Elvis soundtrack. Um, so no, that's a really nice uh, item to pick up if you're into vinyl. And he this isn't, by the way, I'm a CD snob. I'm not a CD snob, but I'm not a vinyl snob. I just buy it to consume music. This is Soul Jacker by the Eels. Uh, this was a pound. This is the last CD I bought in my 49th year. Um, it's the double CD featuring the extra disc. I don't think I've got it, so there you are. Okay, now that's one bag. Yeah. Please tell me we're not going to spend so long going to the other two. Absolutely not. We're not even going to take the others out of the bags. Well, we're going to have to take them out of the bag, but we don't have to take them out of the bag. Okay. If you can read this, you know what this is. This is a box set, and I'd like to thank my brother very dearly for this because he treated me to a birthday present today. <laughs> not evil. And not that enough. This is the Mount Everything Must Go Mega Ultra Box Set. What's in this Mega Ultra Box Set, Mr. First off, the uh, Everything Must Go 20 vinyl EP. This is a 48 page book. Uh, a CD of Everything Must Go and its B sides. Yep. Uh, a second CD of its B sides. A DVD of Live of the Nine X in Manchester. And a DVD called Fruit from Memories and Promo Videos. This was, how much new should it have been? Oh, it should have been 80 quid, I think. Is oh, it 80 hours, yeah? 80, 90 quid, 60, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, 30 pounds today. 30 pounds today. 30 pounds today. Good food. Two CDs, two DVDs, an LP, and a book is pretty good going. Thank you very much, Mark. I could not have possibly justified buying this. Under any other circumstances. It is his birthday, I figured I'd treat him. As in twins, that means it's his birthday as well. Well, tomorrow, but yes, of course. And is this, is this the last thing now? This is the last thing. Okay, the last thing. I think it's the last thing. Is it the last thing? No, it's the yeah. last thing. Yeah. yeah, it's the last thing. Um, uh, this I treated myself to. Money. It's still in the box, isn't it? So you still can't in the box. So I can't take it out, or can I? No, 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 it actually. <gasps> Because I opened it. Oh, come on, no, no. But you have to do the unboxing on the screen, then it becomes an unboxing video. Oh, oh shit, that's how bankers do it. Is this my first unboxing video? Yeah, I think it is. Have you ever done an unboxing video before? Am I beating you to? Am I, so am I beating you to doing an unboxing video on your channel? I did an unboxing on the David Bowie box. Okay, so this is the box set. Right? It's I'm going to pretend I'm going to open it with my finger guns. Stop <laughs> Apologies for the vile breaking transmission there. Somebody uh, knocked a glass over onto their things, which they were doing. And um, we'll be back very, very soon indeed. <sighs> well, that was an exciting uh, advertising break, which we weren't expecting to have. Um, somebody knocked a glass of drink all over everything he's just shown you, he's just bought. Um, so, I'm a doofus. Yes. I willingly admit to be a doofus. Right, this is a present from someone special. Is it? It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. They gave me some money for it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that is nice then. This is an unboxing video. Okay, that's a box. This is the box. 
No, you have, don't. Have you ever been inside the box? No. Do you know what's inside the box? A lot of stuff because it's Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses is Appetite for Destruction Super Deluxe box set with four CDs, Blu-ray audio, 73 tracks, 48 of which haven't been released. So CD1 is Appetite for Destruction Remastered. CD2 is the B-Sides and EP tracks. CD3 is... Um, Sound City Sessions. Sound City Sessions, yeah, uh, 12 tracks. Yeah. CD4 is another bunch of unreleased tracks, 15 or so. And then there's Disc 5, which is Blu-ray audio and some bonus tracks and music videos. And uh, I'm really glad to have this. I've been after this for a long time. When it first came out, it was about £150. Today, it cost me about a quarter of that. Yeah, £40, I believe. £40, I think it was. Yeah, yes. £40. Which is a lot nearer to the price for it, but that still won't get you one T-shirt at a Guns N' Roses show. Guns N' Roses! Um, here's the box. Mm. It's a bit of cardboard. It's a bit of cardboard. Now, we go on to part three of the show. Which is, Mark does the show and tell of the stuff he bought today. Okay, so I'm going to show you the stuff I bought today. And, uh, let's, let's just let's just go with what we've got. Right, so we'll get that out. Show what you've got. And, uh, oh, I bought some water as well, but you don't, you're not interested in that. I'm not sure I'm interested in that. No, I'm not as good. Yeah. I bought some from the RF Museum, it's a water bottle, I'm not just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the first thing is we have is uh, uh, Black Francis uh, of The Pixies and his album Blue Finger on Crooked Vinyl from 2007. That was a pound. Then we have Frank Black and the Catholics Pistolero, which again was a pound, and that was from 2003. Uh, this, oh no, that's not Pistolero, is it? Show me, that one is show, show me your tears. This is Pistolero, uh, and again, this was a pound. Real Frank Black trip going on today. Oh, I think my brother likes the pixies. I also bought this. What's this? What's this? It is the tour programme for Roger Waters' uh, The Wall Tour in 2013, uh, which we saw at Wembley Stadium we did. Uh, 10 years ago. Uh, um, this is the tour programme. This was £5, which was quite good. And um, it was £5, not £15, because the glue that's holding the outer sleeve together is, is uh, broken. I would like to thank my friends Crit and Stick, and they will make that thing all fit together. And we'll make all that pain go away. Wash away the tears, wash away the pain. I'll speak for you. So it's a, kiss, it's a killing joke, Lord. Is it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, so we have uh, an LP by the band Factory Floor. Um, this was released in 2016 on Play It Again Sam. This was £2.50 on Bobby. We also have the LP by Gwenno. Gwenno is a Welsh artist um, who I've seen supporting Suede a number of times and is very good indeed. This was £2.50 for the final. Uh, we also have here, Erasure's World Beyond. This is, I think, the, uh, the limited edition red vinyl version of the album, which cost me £10. I love Erasure. I know I haven't done any knockcasts about them, but I've got to hold some back for the next however many years I'm going to be doing these things, rather than just start off and do everything all in one go. Um, we have uh, a single by the Corgis, and this is called Everybody's Got to Learn Sometime. Now, I may be wrong, but if I am correct, the Corgis, this is the first recorded appearance on vinyl of a musician called Alan Charles Wilder, who, if you're a fan of Depeche Mode, you will know, played keyboards and drums and did everything apart from singing in Depeche Mode for 13 of their very best years between 1982 and 1995. This is undoubtedly going to be atrociously bad, but it was worth buying. On the contrary, it's an excellent record. But I've also pointed out. Is it? Yeah, it is. Also, if you've ever watched Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, you might know the song because a cover version by Beck is played over the end credits. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's it. That's Everybody's got to learn some dance. That's it. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. that's my mind. That's boom. A tiny fragile. Did you not know that? No, I didn't. Oh, that's great. Right. I, I, I mean, yeah. I knew it was a cover, but I've never yeah. joined the dots. So yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's yeah. The, Okay, so there's a couple of other things I've bought. Uh, this one, this is Kraftwerk Remixes Triple LP that was released earlier on in 2022. Now this uh, has a retail price of 49.99 from HMV if you're an idiot. This cost 25 pounds uh, from the record fair, which is probably what I would want to pay for an album of three, three sets of remixes. So this has previously released mixes and recordings of music non-stop. It's got non-album versions of the robots, home computer, radioactivity, Expo 2000, Aereo Dynamite, Through the France, 
and Le Four. It is completely unnecessary. It's uh, and therefore utterly essential. Well, mm. yes. From a completist point of view, <laughs> from a certain point of view, I'm which talking. is that we love crap work. From a completist point of view, I spent some time buying some records. These are unexpected. Um, so we found a store, and the store had a three for ten pounds section, and it had a special section wrapped out for famous international rock beat pop combo. The Beatles, the Beatles, and uh, I have uh, I, I've recently inherited a pretty substantial Beatles collection. I haven't inherited the American version of the albums. Um, now this is going to make the the um, <coughs> banker from Parliament Auctions upset uh, because I these records have been played and owned and loved by various people. So all of this lot cost me thirty pounds. I've got the nine American Beatles albums that I don't own. This is introducing the Beatles on VJ Records. I think this is the, uh, the first record that was released uh, by the Beatles in the US. And in America, as is often the case, um, they, they cut songs out of the albums to make more albums out of them. So there are nine exclusive configurations of Beatles albums in America. This is the first one that was released on VJ, introducing the Beatles, England's number one vocal group, uh, which was um, because they had Oh yeah, it must have had about 300 of these various albums in various oh, forms. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was more. Um, so we went through and we chose the best versions of each one of these nine albums, which took about 25 minutes. Graham was very patient, but it was worth it. So we have introduced the Beatles, and the, uh, the first Beatles album released in America, not released in the UK, that was three pounds thirty. Many of these were sort of slightly slightly scratched or, or in far less than perfect condition, but I think it's a case of I have these Beatles albums which I didn't have before. Yeah, the, the, these albums are very, very clearly loved and owned by various people, including uh, Richard Farmer, who owned this copy of the Meet the Beatles with uh, Beatles in Brown. There were versions available with the word Beatles in green. I think those were the stereo versions and the mono versions had it in green. But sadly, this one has a stereo edition of the album inside a mono cover, but you know what, I ain't complaining. Um, and so we also have the Beatles second album, uh, which is uh, again not released out here in the UK. Again, this is a mono version of the album inside a stereo sleeve, but I'll, I'll take what I can. No, don't pause it. Oh, okay, fine. And uh, we also have here Something New by the Beatles. So this is the fourth album. This was owned by someone called Linda, whoever Linda is. I'd like to thank Linda for owning it and not beating it to absolute rubbish. It doesn't have a paper in a sleeve. Uh, but uh, this is the, uh, again, it's the mono version of the album in a mono sleeve, which is not particularly common. I think. Spoiler, I thought I was going to sneeze there and I didn't. This is the soundtrack to the album A Hard Day's Night, which features a different track listing and it features some instrumental uh, and it features also an exclusive piece of Beatles music that is before the title track, I think, which is... The James Bond theme? Yeah, uh, kind of like a 20 second variation of the James Bond theme before Mother Beatles, which isn't on any of the UK albums. Um, again, £3.30 for that. Then we have <coughs> Great New Hits. Uh, Beatles 65, uh, this is the, uh, as you can tell, has been loved and uh, it features um, a number of songs, again, no inner sleeve, this one's got a pretty hefty scratch on the back and this is uh, Patty Jean Harvey, presumably not PJ Harvey's mum, but there you are. Might be. Might be. Might be. Might be not. Uh, this is Beatles 6, uh, the sixth Beatles album recorded in England. And uh, again, there is no UK edition of this. Uh, this is the, the one. This, this is the, the one that's clearly in the worst condition. It was the only copy they had of Yesterday and Today. Sadly, not in the butch cover, but still in a cover, which made it better than some of them. Um, and made it better than not owning it at all. Yeah. Hi, Andy from Parlagon. Are you are you really worried now? Oh, I'm trolling. Sorry, He's my bad. <laughs> That's yeah. if I'd do that. And here is uh, an American only Beatles album, which is only available on CD in the Beatles US Masters box set or uh, from an original vinyl, vinyl edition. This is The Beatles Story, a narrative and musical biography of Beatlemania on a double LP. Uh, and again, the Beatles' lives in close up, packed with details, anecdotes, facts you never knew before about them. 
the authentic personal stories of all four guys. And uh, yeah, there you go. Um, and again, £3.30. So I've got the nine American only Beatles albums apart from Hey Jude uh, for £30. I have Hey Jude anyway, so it's kind of okay. I also have Beatles Live at Hollywood Bowl um, and the, uh, the collection of Beatles oldies as well. So uh, these are ones which are, I mean, obviously the Beatles sold an enormous amount of records. The records were loved, they were played to death, uh, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy them. No, you own them beforehand, you didn't have them. Yeah. You can tick them off your list of records I own. I mean, at some point you might pick up better, you know, copies in better condition, but part of, a record is, yeah. is lo part of owning a record is loving it and playing it. And that's yeah. what happened with these records. And that's what I'm going to do with them. Uh, I'm going to listen to them. And uh, the American versions of the albums apparently have different mixes and phasing effects, and, and obviously different artwork and different running orders and track lists and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited to find out what it's going to be like to listen to albums which I have known and loved and appreciated, because obviously there was a part time when I didn't like the Beatles. Now I'm kind of mellowing slowly to them. It could just be uh, repeated exposure, like radiation or something, and they finally got in and got me. Um, but uh, these are different versions of the albums, different covers, different mixes, different, you know, and that awful phasing effect that well, whoever the, the guy at the American record company thought they'd sound better like that. So I'm going to give them a shot and find out what they like. And if nothing else, well, I'm going to stick them on the shelf because I can never have too many records. But they're just men. can have, we're just normal, innocent record collectors. Yeah, just normal, innocent record collectors. We're just normal, innocent record collectors. Innocent record collectors. Okay, so with that, um, we're going to wrap up here and uh, we're going to do another one in a minute or two. Uh, but that's number 300, and that's what's in my bag. You've seen what's in my bag. You've seen what's in my bag. You've seen what he's dipped out of his bag and covered in coat. And now you've also seen all the stuff that I've just bought. If you're not interested in these, that's okay. You can press stop at any point. And if it's taking you 36 minutes to work out that you can close the tab and do something less boring instead, okay, that's great. That's in my view counts. Other more interesting episodes are available, and we might do one in a minute if that's okay. When you say, I can press stop at any point, is that this button? What, these bleeds? These bleeds. That button? That button. The button mark stop? The button mark stop. The button mark stop? Yeah, you should. Let's find out if it works. Stop.